Haven't been able to do this in a while. Victory <laughs> episode, dude. Are you are yeah. you ready for this? Have I don't even know how to celebrate show. a win anymore. With a big smile on your face. That's what you <laughs> yeah, do. Shit eating grin. <laughs> you go into work and you have a day, and then you come on the show and you have a you have an evening. That's what you oh, do man. here. It is nice, nice change change of pace. It sucks that uh, you know we had to have those those down moments during the holiday season because I felt like as much as I didn't want it to affect me, it was at times. <laughs> yeah, I think you know overall, Chiefs fans have been humbled this this season and we didn't have to miss the playoffs we didn't have to lose the division we didn't have to have a single digit win single digits in the win column to get humbled um you know we were able to still go to the playoffs still win the afc west still get at least 10 wins in the season um to get a little humble soup so you know you and i have talked about a couple times now throughout the weeks where whoo you know we we took some hits there and uh, we kept rolling and here we are we're in the dance and we've said how many times you know you make it to the dance that's all you need to do so now it's time to lace up get a get a little freebie of a buy this weekend right when we travel to LA and just give uh, us a chance make something happen next weekend yeah just give us a chance that's all we could ask for yeah, yeah. for sure yeah <clears throat> now I know you you said it already right humble pie for sure but in that in that big time message carried one piece of news and that's that we've won our eighth straight divisional title with the win over the the Bengals. so let's just get a round of applause going for our guy andy reed this streak extends beyond patrick mahomes it extends to a time in chiefs football that you know you could feel we were right there on the edge and we just couldn't get over that hump. And unfortunately, Alex Smith was yep. not able to get us get us over that hump with those great defenses and solid skill players that carried over to Mahomes. But man, what a ride it's been the last eight years with Mahomes, Reed, Kelsey, Jones has been a part of the majority of those. Obviously, Mahomes wasn't yep. a part of all of them either. But all of the different players that have graced Kansas City on the way. To, to the streak, it's just insane. I mean, Tom Baha Lee, Eric Berry, Justin Houston, this is all dating back to when they contributed to this team and were suiting up every Sunday at Arrowhead. So, I mean, just huge props to the foundation that guys like Derek Johnson laid out for, for the Chiefs and what it's been able to morph into uh, with the stars that we have and, and everything that they're going to do in the future. So, pretty awesome. It's just pretty awesome to see this culmination of division titles and the success that's come along with it. Yeah. And to your point there, you know, the, the tenure we've had here with eight straight in a row where eight years ago it was, you know, we had eight division titles and then the other three teams in the AFC West each had 15. And now we sit in first place at 16 division titles and hold the one spot all time for division titles in the AFC West with the Broncos, Raiders, and Chargers, which is also a great feeling um, to be able to talk that shit on those other teams because they always seem to be pecking at us for you know, dumb little stats that they may have of the Chiefs. But <laughs> here we go, take another one, and uh, be sure to let your AFC West friends know about this one for sure. So uh, we earned it the hard way this year. That's for sure, man. Oh, man, through the grime and the muck. Yeah, we yeah, stand yeah. atop the broken afc west they yeah they, uh you know the rest of those teams not too good of a year for them either so pretty crazy to see it stretch across the division like that um but yeah man we're the king of the turd pile this year <laughs> yeah yeah i'll take a three seed though man we're gonna roll into the playoffs and uh, love we can it get some guys rested up some older guys rested up this weekend and uh at least get that get kelsey that that 16 yards he needs but other than that, the guys need some rest. And but you know, Dan, let's talk about the Bengals game here real quick. Yes, sir. As a Chiefs fan, this is a big one, right? So once the schedule came out in May, this is one of those that we circled, right? So you got the division games you circle, you got the Cincinnati game you circle, you got the Buffalo game that gets circled, hmm. you got the Super Bowl rematch that gets circled. And those are 
big high caliber games. And obviously we're missing Joe Burrow in this one who we wish, you know, I wish he was playing just so we could you know, knock another one off his belt, but um, Chiefs steal it 25, 17 really played phenomenal defense. We'll get into the game, really uh, the hard details here in a bit, but um, let's start us off with the player of the game. Who do you got Dan from, from the Bengals game? Yeah, dude, Player of the Game brought to you by the Atlas Saloon, of course. A lot of fun stuff we're doing over there, live shows and events. But they have a lot of their own events too, right? They have a whole schedule throughout the week, whether it's wear your shirt, get a free beer, or any of their uh, live events. They do have free pool on Tuesdays as well, which I don't know about you, Trey, but I've been getting into billiards a little bit more here and there. Um, Love, love, love the environment over there at the Atlas Saloon in Excelsior Springs. So appreciate them being such a phenomenal partner to us and uh definitely check them out if you ha- need somewhere to go for a playoff game this year they're going to be the ones to host because oh yeah probably not a good chance we we have you know more than one home game if we're lucky so uh just the way the, sh- the seating's shaking out but yeah dude player of the game it was hard for me because i thought there were so many players on the defensive side of the ball that really deserved this and you could extend this to some guys on the offense as well but I'm going with Justin Reed because <clears throat> he pretty much put the nail in the coffin for them on that final drive. Two sacks, back-to-back plays, basically. You got your sack, two-minute warning, sack again. To do that from the safety position, I mean, credit goes out to Spagnolo for sure for disguising that and for allowing him to get an avenue to the quarterback, but also for him to execute that damn play two times in a row. Yeah, he got back yeah, there no, to no, Browning no. down, and then they had a bunch of other tackles in addition to that, right? Still, you, you haven't – I mean, look at a stat sheet for any of these games, and you're not going to see him outside the top three in total tackles for that particular game. So he was all over the field, and I think he's been a key member of this Chiefs secondary that's been so stifling to opposing receivers, whether it's over-the-top safety help, whether it's drawing the tight end for the opposing team. He's been phenomenal, but those two that that back to back play set and that series in general, I think earned him that distinction for me personally. Yeah, a, a phenomenal game for Justin Reed, man. Stags dials up pressure like nobody else does in the league, man. And, and we're I, I'm not sure where we're standing right now on on pressures and sacks, but we were going into the game we were third in the league, so I guarantee we're at least second or still third. Uh, with, with the performance we saw from that defense. But, yeah, Justin Reed's such a huge part of the defense. But uh, I'm going with Harrison Bucker here. How can I not? You know, when I when I pulled up the show sheet here, I was like, you know, who should I go with as far as the player of the game? Because I know Dan's going to have Harrison Bucker. But, uh, man, I'm a little shocked that you didn't here. Six field goals. Man scored 18 points by himself. Absolutely dominated the scoreboard. Um, probably at this point, I don't know for sure. Likely he's the highest scorer on, on the Chiefs team right now. I know it has been in the past where we've had a lights out offense as well. So um, could have beat the Bengals by himself without the offensive scoring. That's a pretty powerful stat there. And then uh, hit the 54 yarder. I think it's important for Harrison Bucker keeps nailing these daggers from deep, man. I mean, he's an absolute unit when it comes from 50 plus. Uh, It just continuously gives you the strength and the stretch of the offense to where if we get stalled out somewhere around the 40 yard line, we still have faith that we can, we can bump one in from, from deep. So as, as he sits right now, he's hitting 31 of 33 on the season. The man's at 94%. That's with a rounded up, but uh, I'm taking 94% all day. He he went, you know, I don't, I don't know how many weeks without a miss. I think it was, you know, 13 or 14 weeks without a miss. So that's pretty solid for me. And I look for Harrison Bucker really go hundred percent for the rest of the year. So uh, a couple of things going into that with the weather and things like that, but uh, oh yeah, absolute stud Sunday, man. And uh, to be able to have somebody like that you can trust when the off when we have an offense like we do right now that stalls out mid drive um, and it continues to turn the football over, it's it's nice to have somebody you can count on to kick field goals like that. Absolutely, no, I I, I mean. Hard not to give it to the guy that put up enough points to do what the Steelers did did to us in 2016, right? So, uh, great great performance from Harrison Butker. To answer your question from earlier, we are we are second in the NFL in team sacks at 54. The Baltimore Ravens lead the pack at 57. 
Bills nice. and Dolphins at 53 right behind us. So not bad. Not bad at all. Very nice. Very nice. <clears throat> Uh, let's look into the post-game injury report. Really not a ton to report on as of now. I mean, with the game coming up this weekend, we're locked in for the three seed. We'll talk about the full playoff implications later in the show. But there's really – I would be surprised to see anybody that has a question mark around their name suit up on Sunday just because of the nature of that game. Um but, you know, coming out of this game, nothing serious, right? Nothing that's like jumping out the page when you look at this injury report. So the fact we're getting potentially an extra week for some of these starters to get some rest, I think, is pretty big considering we won't have a bye this this year in the playoffs. Yeah, it's a very unique situation for us, right? You know, without having the one seed and being able to get somewhat of a bye before we go into the to the playoff push here is a pretty big deal. But um, mm-hmm. Just to get into the game points here for, for the, the Cincinnati game we just watched here, Dan, but I'm going to bring this one in with Better Homes and Garden, specifically Katie Lawrence with Better Homes and Garden. She is buying, selling, or being able to help you build the home of your dreams. So she is a real estate agent for Better Homes and Garden and wants to be the middleman for you, take care of all the gray work, all the all the, the behind-the-scenes activity that goes on with buying, selling, or building a home. So she's going to be able to take care of all that dirty work for you to where you can just be able to select the absolute dream uh, dream home for you and your family and uh, make it happen for you guys. So uh, be, be sure to get a hold of Katie if you're looking to buy, build, or sell a home. You can get a hold of her at 816-868-1920. But, uh, Dan, as the week wraps up last week with the Cincinnati game, uh, we can wave goodbye to Cincy as they will be watching the Chiefs play football from the couch this year as well as the Broncos. It was a, uh, is a, a nice, little, nice little cherry on top with the Broncos there, being able to knock them out of the playoffs as well. They were hoping for a couple more losses from the Chiefs to be able to squeeze out the division there, but we wrapped that one up. So um, just, just a beautiful sight to, to see, you know, one, an AFC West opponent get knocked out, but two, the, the, the Bengals. And we got to do that. And, and like I said, that's a game that's circled on the, on the calendar when you, when you play the Bengals. So it's nice to be able to handle that business yourself, especially after all the shit that was talked throughout the week from Jamar Chase. Yeah, And uh, it was nice to kind of, Send that one home yourself. One hundred percent. I mean, I, I mean, you, you're looking at all of the jawing that was done leading up to the game, everything that went on there, <clears throat> just to kind of silence them a little bit. Even, even without, you know, Joe Burrow, which obviously you said it earlier, we, we want that team to be a full strength so that we can carry the bragging rights a little bit more in those instances where you win. Um, But the fact that we were able to get Jamar chase to be quiet and, you know, have a seat and eat some humble pie. That was pretty cool. Obviously he doesn't take humble pie too well at the end of that game. Keeps talking, saying something about Sneed fighting him. I just loved Sneed getting questioned about it and really just looking like a much more mature player, um, a more professional player uh, in his interview when asked pretty much the same question. So pretty awesome to see the way Snead carries himself in that locker room and, and outside the locker room as well. Yeah, he's a pretty quiet dude. I, I think he, you know, just from watching him play several, several <clears throat> years now, he definitely, uh, you know, gives a lot more emotion on the field as we've seen than he does in the interviews. And and personally, that's the kind of guy I want to be rocking with. So it, it's nice to be able to shut those those loud mouths up, you know, being Jamar Chase. Um, interesting to see, you know, his teammates laughing behind him, whether he was they were laughing with him or laughing at him is still to be determined. So, um, yeah, interesting deal, fun deal. Yeah, I, I, I definitely love being a part of, a team that, you know, gets to come out and smack somebody in the mouth after, after talking shit, you know, that's, that's one of the best parts about football, you know, quite honestly. And, and oh yeah, um, I, I like to be on the good side of that. That's for sure. But, you know, as we get into the game here, Dan, let's, let's talk to the defense here first. Um, 
I think somebody we need to talk about a little bit who hasn't been talked about and a uh, guy that missed the first six games of the year uh, due to a suspension, but uh, a mini here. And he's had he had a great game. He's he's had a game or he's had a sack in every game the last five games. And uh, it, it kind of goes to speak to the depth at which we have pass rushers right now. And there's kind of been some conversation about Frank Clark. Should we bring him back? But, you know, I, it kind of speaks to the, like I said, the depth that we have at, at the, at the pass rusher and how, how well each, every, everybody's playing at that position and where we have, you know, not just one or two guys like we've had in the past, you know, double digit sacks, but we have multiple guys sitting at, you know, five plus sacks. And I mean, he was just another one of those guys who's been working his ass off and been making a lot of plays for this defense. And um, to your point about Justin Reed earlier, man, he's just another puzzle piece to this defense. It's making everybody else successful. So oh, yeah. you know, hats off to, to a mini Hugh and what he's done so far this season while he's played. Yeah, man, he's been, he's been a stud watching him line up. Obviously we didn't get him for those first six games. So seeing that impact and realizing that, you know, he's been a phenomenal addition to this team is is definitely promising. Five sacks for the defense in the second half. Almost all of them came on that final drive. I think we had four total sacks of the five that were in the second half on Browning, two coming from Reed. We got one from uh, Chris Jones, and I think yep. maybe it was Aminahu or Karloftis that had the other yeah, one. Yeah, I have to yeah. check the stat sheet on that. But, I want to say it was Carl Loftus, but yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, yeah, because that was the one to get him double digits on the year. So shuts it down, you know, shut shut him down in that final drive, and that's that clutch playoff style of defensive play uh, that you yeah. want to see as we're, as we're heading into, as we are now into January, I guess you could say. Um, dude, so much fun watching these guys just kick ass on defense. Didn't allow a single point after about the six minute mark in the second quarter held them. They went for fourth down on a, on a critical drive where we got turnover on downs in their, you know, in our own territory. Um, just constant resilience from this def defense here, no matter what, you know, back against the wall, yeah. these guys are going to make a play something. I still want to see more of generate some turnovers, you know, like I'm, I'm being nitpicky here for sure. But if we're given our, our offenses, has not been living up to previous year's hypes, right? If we're giving yeah, these guys yeah. as many opportunities as possible, it's really just going to maximize our opportunities to score. And so yeah. if we get some more of those turnover type plays, stripping that ball out, which I know McDuffie, Reed, those guys can do that type of thing. Or or if you get a big hit from Willie Gay, that's going to be a, the, the kind of hit that jars a football loose. Those are things I want to see some more of. Or whether it's, I mean, we're sacking... We're sacking these guys at like a four sack a game clip. It'd be cool to see us do a couple strip sacks there too. So oh, yeah. uh, just yeah. getting some more of that going. Other than that, man, oh man, our defense is just like it's been the absolute best part about the season. I know we talked about it in the last episode too, but man, it's I just really wish we had some more offensive firepower to not waste what we've got here because we could really be steamrolling teams. Yeah, you know, you know, you're right, and and it's been fun to watch, and you know, I, I think at this point we, and I know you agree, it, at this point we have to accept what we have on the other side of the ball, and just really pound in and and make the most out of what we can of this defense, because we know once the season is over, this defense is gonna break into a couple pieces due to contracts and guys extending and and whatever it may be, so. Um, yeah, we got to take advantage of it. And, you know, I, I don't think there's a better person to do it outside of Pac Patrick Mahomes. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, a lot of guys have been playing really good ball all year. And a lot of guys have stepped up. A lot of guys we weren't necessarily anticipating stepping up. You know, somebody we don't talk about a lot is Leo Chanel. And he's played phenomenal football so far this year. And I, I it speaks, you know, quite a bit when he's starting over Drew Tranquil and Drew Tranquil played 38% of the snaps on defense against the Bengals. And that's for me, that's tough to tough to accept because I think Drew Tranquil is the second best linebacker we have on that team. But I think that goes into the depth. We've already talked about the pass rushers, but it goes into the depth of the, of the linebackers as well. And, and 
we've talked secondary all year and, and how successful they've been. So really we have a, a, a very unique defense right now. And yeah, I don't want to say we're wasting it, but uh, it, we, we just need to do a better job of capitalizing on opportunities that, that the defense has given us for sure. 100%. On offense, it wasn't a beautiful day necessarily. It wasn't ugly. It wasn't as ugly as it's been, I guess I should say. A couple of drops, right? We'll start with the bad here. Just get it out of the way. I don't know. When when someone asks you, do you want the good news or the bad news, do you usually start with the bad news? I always start with the bad, bro. Get it over with. That's what I'm saying. Let's just get this thing over with. MVS. <laughs> A couple of drops and again. I mean, yep. he is just drawing the ire of so many Chiefs fans. Like, I don't know. I can't think of a time where a player has frustrated me as a fan more than what I've seen from MVS this year. Now, I know we've had other players in the past, like D Ford jumping off sides was pretty frustrating in that AFC yeah. championship game. Orlando yeah. Sandrick yeah. blowing coverages. That was frustrating. Right. D-Rob. <clears throat> D-Rob, D-Rob always running mind. backwards five yards before he tries to gain a yard. That's pretty frustrating to me. But Marquez, man, I love him as a player off the field. I think everything he's done in our community is phenomenal. Um, but he's just not doing it on the field, unfortunately. <laughs> this year. I mean, the guy's average seven said. yards. He's on average. I'm trying to soften the blow a little bit here. He's averaged almost 700 yards a year in his career, and he's sitting yeah. under 200 right now, and probably accounts for 50 percent of the drops that we've seen from this team. Him and Tony are fighting for that. So <clears throat> it's just really frustrating. I know there were some videos and people trying to analyze the drop that he like maybe said something to Mahomes. And I don't know that that's the case. I think it was more like, you know, I don't know when I mess something up, sometimes I'll like, you know, like, come on, like t- talking to myself, like just catch it. And that's more what I got from that than him like trying to say something to, to Mahomes. Yeah, I, I disagree. I, I think he was like, yeah, I think he was trying to walk the football in. Like, why did you not throw this ball on my route? You know, it was a little bit behind. Uh, you know, Patrick doesn't throw the ball perfect every time, but the way I read the play, the way I read the body language after that was like, like bring this ball this way. Like, what the hell is going on? And I don't, did you see Travis Kelsey's response on the same play as soon as he saw the drop? Did you see that? No, I did not. I I didn't get to watch the broadcast as close as so, as you did, unfortunately. So I, the shit as, there. Soon, <laughs> as soon as he dropped the ball, as soon as MVS dropped the ball, Pat or uh, Travis Kelsey like throws his fist like he's pissed, and and you could just see the frustration in Travis Kelsey as well. As soon as he drops the ball, so you know I I know, and we've talked about it the last couple of weeks where they're coming out of the press conferences after the game and saying we got things to work on, we'll get better, we're on to next week, we got a good matchup, blah 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 blah, you know, all that bullshit. But you could see, you know, and we've seen the frustration of Patrick Mahomes. That's obvious on the sidelines. But you can start to see it in other players now with, with what we saw in Travis Kelsey. And, and we both knew, right? We, we know that, that other players are frustrated with how things are going. That That's not that's not the secret here. I, I think the secret is that, you know, it's it's definitely bottlenecked into, into certain individuals. And I... I don't know. I, I really don't know why that hasn't been addressed on the offense. I don't know why he's second in snaps, second mm. to, to Rasheed Rice. I, I don't understand Preach. that. I don't know why he's first in snaps the week before against the Raiders. I don't understand that. And, you know, despite the, the injuries with, with Tony, when he makes mistakes, he's not still sticking around and like hang, dangling out there and, and being a, a cancer to the offense where. MVS just continues and continues and continues to bring the offense down and it's not addressed. Like I, I it doesn't matter at this point who's out there. Like throw Richie James at the one. I, I don't care. Rasheed Ross is obviously <laughs> our, our number one receiver. 
<laughs> but let Richie James play and, and let yeah, I haven't seen Sky Moore in weeks, which is probably a good thing. But like it's been weeks, so let's throw this guy back out there and see what he can do. You know, like right. We, there's and the, the conversation has been accountability all year. It really has been. I was like, and I was thinking to myself this whole year, like, is that really the deal? Like, is accountability really the word? Is that really the root cause here? But it really is because they just keep throwing this dude out there to go run routes and drop balls, and yeah. he's not. He's not. He's not drawing double, double coverage. So it's just one on one. So what they're is letting, what's the value there? They're letting hit they're letting the mistakes come to them, right? The opposing defense is, yeah. is letting that happen. They're gonna give him an opportunity or two, because like what? They don't pay him attention on a play or two. The worst that's gonna happen is he's gonna catch one pass for five yards because he doesn't run anything super deep. At least he didn't in this last game. So I mean <clears throat> I, I, I have a hard time putting all of it on the receivers because I don't think Mahomes has been as accurate as what we've seen in the past too. But the attitude, he's, for he's, sure, I get where you're coming from with that. Like but Patrick is on pace for the best completion percentage outside of those drops with the drops of his I, career. I, his accuracy has not looked as good. You have to admit. A lot of times player when the Chiefs players are catching these balls on these passes, they're catching them like this, just the same way that MVS should have caught the ball. Okay. Don't let me sound like <laughs> not saying he shouldn't have caught this damn ball because it hits him right in the hands. And you Both know <clears throat> but with with Mahomes, there's been just as many plays that we've seen them drop on deep routes, and I'm talking passes twenty or deep. He's thrown just as many under. Maybe more. So when you're talking about the deep routes, because those are the most impactful drops I think we've seen other than like the tip passes that get picked and go for touchdowns. Like those are the ones that cost us the most whenever we get yeah, drops yeah. on those deep passes. Like it's a, it, it, and it's not just MVS or Tony it's Kelsey. Kelsey had a drop in that game. It's, it's any of our key players that are doing that. So I don't know. Watson, uh, Watson had a phenomenal catch. Deep pass down the sideline. He almost dropped it. Yeah. He almost yeah. lost that ball. He bobbled it. And so, like, <laughs> there's so many times where it it just like scares you for no reason almost. And oh, me too. Yeah. it's like everyone's got PTSD watching this team run their offense. <laughs> it's right, like, right, oh, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. oh, he's yeah. thrown I deep again. Watch. Close your eyes. Yeah, yeah. Like, what are we doing here? This is not what we're used to. So, I don't know. I I think you bring up a good point with MBS's demeanor off the field about it because he's been asked several tough questions that everyone else is fielding the same question, and he has he definitely has a different response than what the general consensus is. Which you can say, oh, you know, it's bullshit, it's fluff, it's it's what they're supposed to say to the media when they say, yeah, we made a mistake, I'm owning it, I got to clean it up. But that's accountability that they're preaching to everybody around them. So yeah, yeah, right. if, if he's saying that openly to the media, like, I don't know what you're talking about, like he did in one of his interviews earlier in the season, then that's yep. a problem. And that's not going to exactly. sit well with the guys around him. I, I could totally agree with you on that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that changes the culture in the locker room 100%. And that's to my point last week or maybe two weeks ago, we talked about Patrick Mahomes. I was morphing into a different leader now where he's got to be that vocal guy where, you know, you know, he might give you a pat on the ass, but he's also going to be chewing some ass from here on okay. out in his career because nobody else is going to do it. Andy has never been that guy. And I don't know anybody. You gotta do else something egregious to get a reaction guy. out of Andy like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think Patrick's gonna have to be that guy, unless you bring in some some seasoned guy next year that's been in the league for ten years already, and he's already got that mentality, and they come in and just take that role on. I don't see that. I don't want that personally. I want Patrick Mahomes to be that guy because we know Patrick's gonna be here for another eight years. So Patrick has to be that guy. Yeah. Yeah, man, I'm I'm hot now. You got me all hot and bothered. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, let's keep it going because I'm not done with the bad yet. We need to do better when we're on the the opponent's side of the field, right? We've kicked six field goals because our drive stalled out due to drops or penalties or whatever. Just can't execute. Yeah. And thank goodness Bucker was freaking nails on Sunday and just yeah. knocking them things down like a free throw. It was like, I don't know, it was excruciating to watch us claw back that way three points at a time because it was like, yeah. who knows if we're going to march the ball down the field again, which, you know, the silver lining was that we did get down there and we didn't turn the ball over or we didn't go for it on fourth down and come up short like the Bengals did in that game. It was that we came away with points, and even that is something we haven't really <laughs> experienced a ton of lately. We couldn't get anything going yeah. against the Raiders. It was like, you know, offensive purgatory just stuck in the freaking in no man's land we're actually able to get our kicker in a position where he could put some points on the board thank goodness so yeah <clears throat> you know the red zone efficiency from a touchdown perspective has been a talking point for us throughout the entire season and i think we're at i i know i know we're at the point in the season where that's just going to be the gist of it um I don't know. I don't know if they have to get Pacheco on the ground more. He ran 130 yards. Kid had a phenomenal game. But yeah. <clears throat> we just need to do something different in that red zone, and it's probably as simple as just catching the ball. <laughs> Kelsey's dropped a couple touchdowns this year. He only has five on the season. Yep. He should have, like, eight or nine. So yep. and it's just Kelsey. That's just our best option, our best weapon who's dropped touchdowns. That doesn't include some of the other plays where they've been called back because someone was undisciplined uh, pre-snap or post-snap or whatever the case is. So, yep, yeah. Agreed. agreed, man. And it's uh, for Pacheco to almost have a 1,000 yards after missing several games. What a stud, dude. I, yeah. I think he is the answer. I think the offense runs through Pacheco from here on out in the in – the, in the playoffs, you run that you run a heavy offense, you know, between the tackles, let them bounce it. If you want to let the, let the freaking defense take care of business on the other side, eat the clock on offense, let them eat and, and make it happen that way. And maybe that breaks open the, the downfield play. But you know, one thing I'll say for Rasheed Rice is that the fact that he altered a route without communicating that to Patrick, and then Patrick dropped it on his forehead is a beautiful sign for Chiefs fans. And if you can't oh, yeah. see that, just wait until you see what they do in the playoffs or wait until they, you see what they do next year because this connection is going to be a nightmare for defenses like we saw Tom Brady and Randy Moss. Maybe mm -hmm. not to that caliber. I kind of jumped the gun a little bit there, but I'm, I'm, Dan's got me a little worked <laughs> I up. I was today, like, so Brady Moss. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's got me a little worked up today. So, uh, no, these guys are going to be, uh, these guys are going to be locked in, man. And if they can continue to do small things like that, you know, I think there's nobody in the NFL, nobody that watches NFL football can disagree with the fact that Rasheed Rice has gotten mm -hmm. better every single week. You know, the, this dude yeah. is just – his hands are getting better. His routes are getting better. His yards after catch are, are, are second to none uh, in the last second several weeks. I, <laughs> I, I, well, the last several weeks, he's he's yeah. got the most uh, yak. But um, for the season, the only person that's got more yards after catch is Tyreek Hill. So, um, yeah, a familiar face. But uh, this guy is going to be a, a freaking stud, man. He already is. He's about to hit 1,000 yards as well. Yeah, last five games, he's top – five and all the the major receptions and that's not just uh our major receiving stats that's just yeah, not yeah. rookies that's that's everybody so um yeah. the kid's been on a tear longest passing play from him this year at 67 yards pretty awesome pretty awesome to see uh let's go ahead and move this thing into the playoff picture we talked bangles right we punched our ticket we got the division crown we're clinched in for the three seed, okay? We'll, we'll start with the Chiefs and then move into what the rest of the AFC is going to look like. Week 18 is going to be crazy, right? Yeah. And so we'll, you know, we'll we'll have to, like, predict a little bit uh, later in the week. But the way it stands right now after week 17, we're locked in for the three seed. Baltimore's locked in the one seed. And the Browns have locked in the five seed. Yeah. So with that being said, 
the Chiefs could play any co- any one of these teams in the very first round, whether it be Miami, Indianapolis, Buffalo has a chance to take the two seed or end up as the six seed fi- like for the finals, uh, final standings of the season. Houston and Pittsburgh also in the mix for this wild card spot. And they could potentially get the six seed and come to Arrowhead. So of those teams, yeah. there's going to be a lot w- weighing on these matchups that are take place on Saturday. And even more so, the Miami and Buffalo game at the very end of the week on Sunday Night Football. And, you know, lucky for you, you're going to L.A., you're going to get to go see the guys in SoFi. Um, yeah, baby. So I'll be running running the, the Chargers pregame show solo this week. But um, definitely want to get a feel for what you want to see the Chiefs do with our players since you're going to be out there watching the game and you know maybe we won't get all the starters on the field obviously as a fan i want to see everybody play right that's why i'm traveling to go watch the game i want to see the chiefs play their best football <clears throat> but as a as somebody who wants to see the big picture who wants to see a super bowl dub i want to see i think we need some rest man so rest those guys up a couple of things i do want to see though travis kelsey needs to get the thousand yards that's a must yep. for me get it within the first drive and, and sit his ass down. Um, I would also like to see Rasheed Rice get his thousand yards. I think that's a big deal. I want to see Pacheco get a thousand yards, but with the, with the shape that our uh, running back room is in right now, that's not a priority for me with uh, McKinnon being on the IR and uh, CEH was out for an illness last week, but still, you know, I don't have a lot of faith in CEH still, but uh I don't want to dwindle our chances down with a, with with losing Pacheco again. He's already been out for a couple of different injuries throughout the year. I don't want to risk that again. I, I would like to see him get a thousand yards, and I think that's a big deal. But again, man, I don't know if that's worth the risk. And you could say the same with, for the other guys. But Rasheed Rice can hang up sixty in the first quarter or the first half. Um, he's also a rookie. He needs as much playing time as he can get. And yeah. Travis Kelsey can get that sixteen in the first drive, easy. So. I, I do want to see that. I think that's a big deal. And I think Patrick should be a part of that first drive and throwing that to Travis Kelsey. Um, we don't see a lot of pressure on Patrick Mahomes. Our offensive line has done pretty well and, and, and pass blocking outside of the tackles, you know, at, at times, but uh, overall as a unit, they've done, you know, decent. Um, for me, I just want to dub. I don't want to go out to SoFi, play a division game and then lose the charges because we didn't start anybody, you know, I don't want to have to deal with those people. Although there's like, it'll probably be like five to one Chiefs fans and Chargers fans oh, while we're yeah. out there. So I'm not too worried about that. But still, I I don't want to even see them. <laughs> yeah, with, I mean, with the Chargers fans, it is a unique situation because it's going to be one of those rare instances where you go to somebody's stadium and the chief, you're going to hear "Home of the Chiefs" at the end of the anthem very prominently you're going to hear yeah. people doing the chants at you know the punts and and the kickoffs and like that's that's going to be the environment <clears throat> i'm really excited for you to go out there but yeah i mean at the same time like if bling if bling gabbert leads this offense on sunday i'd be totally stoked for that <laughs> just because yeah, just because it means our guys are getting rested up for any one of these challenges that we're going to have in the playoffs right miami's a tough team that we had some trouble with buffalo obviously a tough team pittsburgh has a phenomenal defense couple that with the way our offense is is performing i'm taking the under on that game for sure houston young up and co- coming quarterback indy they're scrappy man like they make yeah. things happen in situations you're not expecting to get wins. That's how they got to this point so far. So, yeah. like, not to mention, we just have, like, nightmare scenarios playing Indy in the playoffs. So, like, yeah, all right. those things yeah. combined, uh, you know, it's <clears throat> it's just like any one of these games is going to be a challenge. And, and it pretty much positions us to be playing a road game the first time with Mahomes, with us being locked in for the three seed, the two seed, and the one seed, like they're the ones that are guaranteed the home games in the divisional round. So we would need something to happen like in, in 2019 or, or so on um, for us to host a divisional game, let alone hosting the AFC championship if we're fortunate enough to make it that far, which 
yeah. you know, I, all the teams you look at the AFC top to bottom, I don't think there's a team we cannot beat. It's just right. about whether or not we're going to let us beat ourselves, if that makes yeah. sense, in those situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, man, I'm ready to see this this whole playoff thing play out. And uh, a lot of teams yeah. eliminated this past weekend. Yeah, so right before you wrap this up, Dan, I got a question for you. So out of those five teams, Miami, Indy, Buffalo, Houston, Pittsburgh, rated one to five, who do you want to see in order? Who's the match? What's the five, matchup you want? Five me one meaning like I want this matchup the most. One is your ideal matchup. Five is like I don't want to see them at all. Ideal matchup, I think it's Indy. <laughs> Personally. Like I think our defense would just give Gardner Minshew fits. And our crowd would really just like it would just be so electric in there. Uh, that would be really tough for him. I think Pittsburgh has a better defense than Indianapolis, which is why I'm putting him at two because I just don't think their offense has the firepower to to overcome what we're going to be bringing to the table. After that, Houston with a rookie quarterback, rookie yep. head coach. I'll take those odds all day at number three, and then it's tough. Right, it's tough because I, I want to play Miami. I want Tyreek Hill to come back to Arrowhead and have that opportunity for for us to play him and and shut yeah. him down. Yeah, you know, at, at least the opportunity to do it. So I mean, ideally, ideal, you know, selfishly, if it's between Buffalo and Miami, who I think we have the highest odds to be playing one of those two teams, I I, I want Miami four. I want Buffalo the least think that yeah, team is really hot they yep. play us well they play us close yep. Yep. every time we play them and you know they have a chip on their shoulder so you know if if uh if buffalo ends up losing to miami there's a chance they don't even make the playoffs that's the real right. ideal scenario for us i yeah, think right. if you're talking about like ideal <laughs> scenarios just yeah, having yeah, yeah. a field that consists of either Miami, Indy, Houston, or Pittsburgh, like that's ideal. But with the injuries Miami sustained, like Tua busted his shoulder up, Bradley Chubb's gone for the year yeah. with ACL. Like you just, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's going to be Tyree kills a little bit hampered and banged up. Buffalo is going to be the toughest team. Yeah, no, I agree. The only, only thing I would switch there would be uh one and two. I, I, I think Pittsburgh is a little bit, a little bit better of a matchup. I think, like you said earlier, Indy's pretty, pretty hot team. They figure out ways to win. And Pittsburgh is just really kind of in shambles, and I don't know how they keep winning games, but I know they couldn't do it against the Chiefs. So I like our odds there, but um, that, that's kind of forty where I'm burger sick. on them for all time's sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a couple, <laughs> you know, maybe a defensive touchdown, a safety, or something like that. I, I would love that, but um, yeah. So. Dan, I'm out. This is my last show of the week. I head out to uh, head out to L.A. on Friday. Yes, and, sir. Uh, it's gonna Hollywood. Going to be a good time. Headed out there with Hudson and Strato. And uh, we're going to enjoy some football out in L.A. this weekend, man. I love that. Love that for you guys. Wish I was going to be there to, to tag along, but I'll hold it down here on the home front, and we'll get another episode cranked out. Uh, later this week to prep for the Chargers game. Everyone look for Trey on TV, man. Yeah, He's going to be, be out the, there. I'll be the guy with no shirt on. My my chest will be painted, and uh, that'll be me. I'll be running. You might <laughs> even see me on the field, butt naked, running across the field. So. Do something crazy, yeah. dude. YOLO. Yeah, what the hell? What the <laughs> hell, man? Let's go. Hell yeah. Well, I do have one piece of advice. SoFi, awesome stadium, awesome atmosphere ton of Chiefs fans when I went um, a couple years ago for a Thursday night football game. There's a restaurant on the top concourse, like level 300, right when you go up from the main entrance. On the left-hand side, best burrito I had in Cali on that whole trip. Interesting. Interesting. Noted. Grab some of that. Noted. Yep. Understood. It's a must. All right, my friend. Salute. <laughs> Safe travels, See you bro. See next week, brother. Yep, let's oh, go, Chiefs. We'll... See y'all later this week. Peace.